Today on the Wine Road Podcast, my destination is Tuscany. Unfortunately, I will not be there in person, but you can bet I'll rely on this promotional interview as a means of getting there because I am inspired by the beauty of the setting, the history of the property, and the personality of my guest. Let's go. So Casal Vento has become one of the top wineries in a very short time in Sotia Divanano as a hotel. We have a huge satisfaction rate. Today's tale is a from the rags to the riches story, as my guest Gudrun Quilo likes to say it. And she's on the phone from Palm Springs, Florida, her other home. Gudrun and her now deceased husband Robert tapped into a nearly lifelong dream of his and serendipitous relationships to build a home and winery and completely restore an ancient village, both on a tall hill in Tuscany. You'll hear about Castle Vento Winery and Livernano Borgo in a few minutes. And there's also the topic of a popular novel written by Gudrun. But I wanted to hear how their life led to this incredible opportunity, which starts with Gudrun, who was an artist in residence with the opera in her home country of Austria. For many years, and I actually was uh, sponsored by a lady, her name was Georgia Klinger, who had um, companies throughout the United States. And um, she was the one who helped me to stay here in the United States. And then I met my husband, and um, soon after we were married. Mm -hmm. So, and I became just like a wife, and and my husband made his fortune in in the car industry. But his passion was music and theater. He did many, many Broadway shows. We owned the, uh, uh, the theater for the performing arts in Palm Beach. And um, he was um, a part of the Chandler Rotasur, which is the oldest gourmet society. And his second passion was collecting wine. So we had an extensive wine collection. Uh, yeah, he, he, seems, he yeah. seems to have been a clever, self-made man. Yeah. Yeah. He was really the, from the, the American dream story from the wreck to the riches, hmm. having absolutely nothing and getting his first pairs of shoes when he went to the Navy, became a cop in New York, a detective, went down to Palm Beach to um, go after his family that all moved down to Florida, started to work in a car dealership, became a partner, and then, long behold, he hmm. won the Lifetime Achievement Awards in business, uh, they called him the Renaissance man, and he always was a person for the for the arts, and helped young people to um, develop themselves. Young artists, even local things that that came around. If somebody wanted to open up a restaurant, and he knew that he had a talent, he would support those people. So he was very very supportive in the in the community. That's fantastic, and he wanted to follow up on a plan from his youth to own property in Italy. I understand. Yep, yep. He always said to me, Gudrun, if I, if, if I always told you myself, and I make it from the wreck to the riches, I will buy myself something in Italy. And our idea was actually a Capri because his family came from Naples. But then our deal fell through, and he had a friend in Tuscany, and we came to visit him, and we walked around and went to different wineries, did the wine tastings, and um, we ended up in a winery called Riechene in Gaioli, where the owner was American, working for Ernst & Young. Hmm. The uh, winemaker was Irish, and his wife was, was, was uh, German. <laughs> and it was on a Sunday in September, and we had such a great time <laughs> that the wine tasting turned into dinner. And then the guy said to us, why don't you buy something here in Tuscany? And my husband said, yeah, why not? So Why the next not? day we went onto this property, Casal Vento. It was not for sale, but the owner had passed, and the wife wanted to move back to Switzerland. So and we came at 11 o'clock. At 1 o'clock, we had a handshake. And on the same week on Friday, we exchanged the money in Lake Como. And wow. then we had a home, and we were so excited. And, uh, um, and then just above that was so the uh, the ancient town of Livernano that sat deserted for decades after World War II. Yep. And you totally restored it. Yep. We went to the archives in Siena, mm-hmm. and we were able to restore all the buildings that had uh, two adjacent walls. So we have now, we have restored five buildings and a church. Wow. That must have been quite an undertaking. Oh, yes. 
It took 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> Even that does. I mean, when you look at the village and how old it looks, and you can tell how ancient it was. It's. It seems like it must have been almost starting from scratch, in a sense. It, it totally. And all of the stones that used uh, came from the ground, so the Albarese stones that we have. Mm-hmm. That's a typical stone of, of our region of Radin Chianti. And uh, we um, had our had the masons, and even in Casalvento for two years, they were just hammering the stones mm. um, and then putting them, you know, one by one onto the walls and the grounds. Everything is, is just absolutely as it was in the old days. It is just the amenities and um, everything else is the modern way. Mm. But all of the rooms are uh, um, furnished with antiques. Yeah. And, um, you know, we also have a chef on the property, so it's in the heavenly bed, so you don't want to leave. Everybody always <laughs> asks us when they make the bookings, you know, what you should see, where they go, and when they come, they don't go anywhere. It's just sleep long, you know, yeah. stay at the pool, have some wine. Yeah, you have a pool, you have a winery you- there, so why do you need yeah. to leave? <laughs> exactly. And a gorgeous exactly. view, too. Oh, my God, yes. Over all of the Tuscan hills from uh, Livanano and also from Casalvento, you can see um, all the way down to, to Monte Pulciano, hmm. you see Siena, the towers, and um, all of these rolling hills from, from this area on the different colors because 70% of Chianti is still woods and only 30% are grapes and olive groves. So you will have the vision of a little like a kaleidoscope of many many different colors that come mm. together interesting and what i yeah and what i love the most is that nothing is overgrown that tuscany still applies to the rules of the buildings you know you cannot just go and build a modern building in between something so sure. everything is really old and ancient looking that's great well, i can't wait to see it myself but the funny part of casalvento was that we thought we just bought a big property and we went back to the States because we had to redo the house and everything. And then we got a phone call from a lawyer six months into it in Florence that there is a winery that would like to buy our Chianti Classico right. We had no idea what this lawyer was talking about. So we said to him, what do you mean? And, and he says, yeah, you know, you have wine rights. So they got into it and into it. And then he said, okay, give me your number. I'll call you back. And my husband hung up the phone and says, good one, guess what? I said, what? I says, we are going to go and make wine. We are going to go and build a vineyard. And I said to my husband, did you lose your marbles? Are you crazy? <laughs> I said, we don't even speak the language. And he said, ah, oh, you're young enough, you can learn. And that's how it all started. Wow. So 2000, we, we planted. It took two years for the excavation work from 1998 until 2000. Sure. 2004 was our first vintage. Hmm. And then... Um, we, we did the fermentation in our garage, and it was very filthy for him. So we <laughs> needed to build a wine cellar. Right. So that's where we built Casalvento, and then um, and the banana was in between. So it was just, it was a, a process that I became so intrigued by that I didn't want anyone else to run this property. And I said, Bob, if I really would like to handle that, I have nothing else to do. And, and I said, please let me. And so we got an agronomist, we got an analogist, and with me on the helm and learning from them, you know, over just 20 some years now, yeah, um, yeah. I have a wonderful team. We work together incredibly, and um, I'm not an I person, I'm a V person, so I could not do this. My whole team together, we are the ones who make Livanano great in sure. Casalento. Yeah, I understand you have nine different grape varieties planted there. Yeah, and yep. a, and a thousand yep. olive trees. Yes, yes. Wow, that's nice. We are completely organic, so we try to to um, do as much as we can. We have two um, hectares of a vegetable garden. We have 150 um, truffle trees on the properties. Um, we make our tomato sauces. Our we bake our bread ourselves. We have all the vegetables that we use in the garden. You know, for the restaurants. Um, we have our own water we also completely self-contained basically and a luxury bed and breakfast yes yeah how- so the town is functions now as a bed and breakfast it doesn't have any natives living there 
it is just our guest. That's awesome. And you live up there too? No, I live in Casalvento. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, looking at the, the websites and such and some of the articles I've seen that are covering your uh, area there, it's just, it's just gorgeous. It's stunning. And so Casalvento has become one of the top wineries in a very short time. And so did uh, Livanano as a hotel. I mean, we have a huge, a high satisfaction rate. Even though you have to arrive on a Strada Bianca on the right road, because it's a part of the Tuscan road that uh, um, serves between Siena and Rada. Sure. And you, it's not allowed to be bathed. They also have the Eroica on there, which is a very famous bicycle um, event that they have two times a year in uh, in Tuscany, where the bike has to be like 30 years old in order to participate. <laughs> now, are you in the uh, Chianti Classico region? Yes, yes. Nice. We are in the heart of the Chianti. So we are 45 minutes south of Florence, 15 minutes north of Siena. Okay. So, yeah, you're allowed to make um, super Tuscans. You uh, have a great number of wine varieties, including Cabernet, Merlot, and in addition to Sangiovese. So each of the, the wineries have to have at least 80% Sangiovese in there. And 20% you can use some of the varieties that you have been growing on the property. Mm-hmm. Um, Chianti Classico holds around 3,600 wineries. Wow, 3,600 wineries. But understand, that's in the 100 square mile area of Chianti Classico. You'll hear about Gudrun's latest accomplishment, which she says is also very successful, when On the Wine Road podcast continues, brought to you by Sonoma Clean Power. For my local listeners, learn how your actions can make a greater impact with clean, renewable energy at poweringeverydaymoments.org. That's poweringeverydaymoments.org. Life is made up of everyday moments. The best breakfast pancakes and bedtime stories, staying up too late and getting up too early. As your public power provider, we at Sonoma Clean Power thrive on sustaining everyday moments, and we do so with a clean energy future in mind. We know these moments are cherished forever. Together, we can protect today's moments and those yet to come. Learn how your actions can make an even greater impact at poweringeverydaymoments.org. Now, back with Gudrun Quilo. At this point in our conversation, I said, Now, you seem like one of those people who just can't sit still. So You got that one right. I have hands <laughs> in my pants. <laughs> so after completing the extensive undertaking of restoring the property, and designing and building a winery, planting vineyards, you decided to write a book about the property, in a sense. Well, I did not really decide to write a book about the property. What happened was is my, my husband got so gravely ill. And with uh, dementia and Alzheimer, they became Mm. um, unresponsive and not knowing themselves. So um, I was not able to have friends over and I was always, you know, by myself, mainly in Palm Beach. And um, I, writing was always my passion. I always wrote short stories and Mm. things like that. Uh And I, I, and I thought, you know, why don't I take this time? Because everybody knows being a caretaker is, very very difficult it can consume you and i needed to find an outlet and i thought that writing would, would be my outlet so i created this this character <clears throat> uh the, created the characters and then through writing and i wanted to write something about you know the change from from living in in, in new york or in palm beach with the high society where the days go by so fast it just wants to you know make as much money as you can but you forget everything else around and you think you're happy at that moment mm-hmm. you think this is your calling and then life just throws your cur- uh, curve ball and then you find out you inherited something but not here in Italy and that's what happened to Erica so while I was writing chapter by chapter and then I arrived with my story in Italy I unconsciously didn't even realize that, that it became me, the Eric that became me. Sure. And everyone else, when I gave my friends, when I read something out loud to them, and I asked them, you know, do I go in the right direction? I said, it's your story, that's you. I said, oh, no, 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 that's not me, that's Erica. But then I realized it was me. And when I started realizing it, I said to myself, okay, 
So then you have to put in, because I didn't know how to boil an egg before I met my husband. <laughs> and he had taught me how to cook. So I, I wanted to embed all of this experience, you know, the cooking part, mm -hmm. the, the winemaking part, the learning about the Chianti Classico. I wanted the people to understand the beauty that Italy, Tuscany has to offer, you know, and, sure. and even with the Mediterranean Sea not being far away, the cities of Siena, the history of the Tuscan turning to the Romans, there, there's the importance of Florence with the Ophizis and all of that. So, and the foods, the Tuscan food, why is the prosciutto so salty? It's because it's, it's, uh, it was a preservative. Mm -hmm. And why was the bread, you know, without salt? It's because salt was so expensive at that time. It was, it was handled like gold. So and with the prosciutto and the, and the salt and the unsalted bread, everything had a balance. And that's what Tuscany is. Tuscany has a balance. It, it's, it's a beautiful place, not only to, to look at, but the people are very friendly. They, um, the surroundings are beautiful. The rolling hills are great. Um, it's very easy to get around from point A to point B. The wineries are most of the time very close. And, um, and even with Chianti Classico and the region and the things where we are, and just being a couple of kilometers apart, how different the soil gets from 20 minutes away. Sure. And how different the wine starts to taste. And, um, you know, a lot of people still think of Chianti as the, as the straw bottle, but we came so far in the development of the fine winemaking mm -hmm. in our terrain that we have, in our trees that surrounds us, you know, is, is something that is absolutely incredible. It's a breathtaking view. And even for me, every morning when I wake up, I'm, I'm so happy. I imagine, yeah. Um, I can sense your passion as you're talking about it. Um, yes. But yes, yeah, so like you said, it's uh, your book is a fictional story, but kind of loosely based on uh, the opportunity that was presented to you in Liverano. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice. And yep. if I'm not mistaken, the book was just released yesterday? It was released yesterday. It sold out as of right now. <laughs> and um, it made the number one bestseller list. How did, wow! And, um, in one yeah, day, in Italian, in one day, and it, it's it's it, and uh, Kindle is already on number fourteen. Then um, there is many different kind of categories um, that you can win bestseller. So I did in Italian literature and um, um, Italian fiction, and um, I, I don't even, I don't even know. I mean. It, Quite it, honestly, would, Jeff, would I'm a little it? bit overwhelmed myself because I never thought that this would come that far. I mean, right. <laughs> would you call it a, a book about wine too, or no, not so much? Yes. Yeah. I do. Okay. Yes, it has a lot of winemaking. It also it it gives you um, um, about the fields, what the difference of the leaves are between the uh, the um, the Sangiovese, the Merlot, the Cabernet, um, when the picking time is the ripening of everything, when is the time to pick, how the wine mason process with the fermentation, with the melolactic, all of that is, is included, but not in an expense, in an extended way, in, in, in a chewing gum way. In mm -hmm. a short, but in a sweet way that people understand when they go and travel to Tuscany, what does a Chianti mean? What is a Chianti classical, you know, and what sure. is a super Tuscan? Wow. And there's also at the end a couple of recipes in there that I use, that I love to cook. And used to cook with my husband all the time, and of course, party drinking with friends. You know, of course. What <laughs> I it's almost like I wanted to to um, uh, bring across the passion and the happiness. What I feel when I'm there in Tuscany, and when my people then buy or my my fans will buy the wines or read the book, that when they open up a bottle of wine that they think the genie is coming from Tuscany out of the bottle. Mm -hmm. And when they read the book that they think they're in the, in the center of it all, That's that you don't want to lay it down. Yeah. And, and in the book, which is titled Castle Vento, House of the Wind. That was what it means. Castle Vento means House of the Wind. Yeah. Is Erica a winemaker too? Erica is, is, is Gudrun. <laughs> she became Gudrun. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> of course, yes. a good one. She starts to live there, and she starts to, to find a new way of life. She started to smell the roses, to see the rainbows, and to understand that um, the New York traffic is, is not the most important. How fast the cars go in New York, how fast the life passes by there, 
and what a beautiful life you can be sure. when you wake up in the morning and you have um, different things. Every day is a challenge for you. Every day is something different. And she experienced, because in the book, there is a provision. She was not able to uh, inherit the properties. Um, she actually had to go and live there for five months. And those five months makes the difference of her being. And each month, there's a letter from her grandfather that um, she had never met. And it explains to her why the father came, first of all, to the United States. Why did he leave uh, the United States? Why was there no, no communication between her, her, her father, her grandmother, and him? And she finds, she finds herself. She finds out what, what you know, yeah. where she is, came, where she came from, and then she finds out her calling. She fi falls in love with Paula, the winemaker there, and a new life begins for her. So, and um, it has a very surprising ending, and um, there's already a sequel to the to the first. Uh, um, ah. book. Oh, okay. So I'm already working on a second one. Wow. Sounds like, uh, yeah, kind of the, the, the story of um, the fantasy that became reality for you. Yes. It, I would call it wishful thinking. Wishful thinking? Yes. Hmm. I always had dreams. I'm always a dreamer. You know, and when you're with someone that has been sick for so, so many years, you know, you don't get this, this, this certain emotional thing from the person anymore. So you start to dream, you know, you and I'm I'm still very young, you know. I mean, so I like I wanted to have things in life. I wanted to have different things, and um, and I made those wishes that I had come true via Erica's voice. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm wishing I could spend some time at Liverano and uh, Castel Vento. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you certainly can. You're not that far away. I just came last night. And um, I'm here doing my book signings and, and some um, your interviews with you. And um, yes, so I'm I'm very excited. And I'm, yeah. it's a new bath. It's a new um, um, a new chapter in my life. Literally, that's fantastic. Yeah, you know, I saw the YouTube video uh, from Italian enthusiast featuring you and oh Castle Vento Winery, and uh, you come across as such a charming dynamo. I am charming. <laughs> and you're, you're a dynamo, too, for sure. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to call me. It was wonderful to talk with you. Oh, Jeff, it's wonderful to talk to you. And I'm glad we could connect. And, you know, you can find me on Facebook, on Instagram. I have also goodwinquilla.com. And um, I would love to see you in Tuscany one day. I would certainly like to see that happen. The ancient village of Livernano and the Castelvento Winery will be a sight to see, which you can peruse at livernano.it or visit her website, gudrunquilo.com. And there you'll find a link to her novel, Castelvento, House of the Wind. I'll put several links in my show notes, including the video I watched showing her on hand at the winery. Now that you're familiar with Gudrun, her winery and the medieval village turned gorgeous bed and breakfast with a welcoming swimming pool, you might want to plan a visit if you venture to Tuscany. Today's episode was written, recorded, and produced by me. Please subscribe to On the Wine Road podcast so each episode will automatically appear on your favorite platform. And I appreciate a positive review if that's an option. Find images, wine news, trivia, and more interviews at onthewineroad.us. I'm on Facebook as On The Wine Road and Instagram as JD Wine Road. I'll talk to you again soon as I share more from my travels on the wine road. I'm Jeff Davis.